Hello and welcome back. Let's discuss why responsive images are so important to web development. According to Hobo, the ideal website load time should be under two seconds. Over half the users who have to wait three or more seconds are going to leave your site. As you can see from these two graphics, images account for the vast majority of any web page. So what can we do to ensure our pages are fast and lightweight? There are several things web developers can do to increase performance and therefore reduce data cost. First, you need to limit the real image width and height to no more than is necessary. Second, choose a format that works well on the web. And third, compress your image. So what is art direction? Well, since you ask, art direction is cropping an image to focus the user's attention on a specific part of the image. When we crop an image for small, medium, and large screens, we will use different framing and different image widths and heights. There are many image editing programs available. Adobe Photoshop is the industry standard, but it costs money. Pixlr is an online image editor that has everything we need for this class, and it's free. This image is 4,800 pixels wide by 3,200 pixels tall. It weighs in at 4,998 kilobytes when saved as a JPEG file at maximum quality. That's pretty big. A really bad practice that we see all the time is where students use the HTML width and height to scale an image. This displays a massive image into a tiny frame. But when you open the original image in a new tab, you can see that it's still the original massive image, and it takes a long time to load. Please don't ever make this mistake. In this example, I have a set of three images, each targeted at a different browser width range. For large desktop computers, we use an image that is 1400 pixels wide. For medium screens, we use an image that's 1000 pixels wide, and for small screens, an image that is only 600 pixels wide. The large image is 22.1 kilobytes, the medium is 16.5, and this small photo only takes 13.6 kilobytes. That's a big difference from the 5,000 of the original image. I have saved all of these images using the WebP format and a compression of 60%. This is the code for a responsive image. Let's review what is happening here. The picture tag has a reference to three different images. First, the picture tag text to see if the browser width is less than 600 pixels wide. Notice the max width here. If the browser is indeed less than 600, then the small image is loaded into the image tag. If the browser is wider than 600, it then moves to the next source set. Now it checks to see if the browser window is less than 1000 pixels wide. If it is indeed less than 1000, then the medium image source set is loaded into the image tag. If the browser is wider than 1000, then it moves on to the last option, which in this case is the large file. So just remember to use max width and start at the top with the smallest file and progress towards the largest file. While we will be building an example with three images, it is possible to have many more. In this example, I have six different images as part of the picture tag source set.